Y'all know I love me some Aquarius energy, so I'm very excited for this video as an Aquarius sun talking to you, Aquarius risings. I love y'all already. So if you are an Aquarius rising, if you know somebody who's Aquarius rising, then this video is for you. And now I know a few Aquarius risings, and so I can kind of give some real life situations and circumstances with this placement. So here we go, y'all. I don't do QT astrology. I don't do intros. Getting right to the point. Aquarius energy, Saturn ruled, Uranus ruled, all about <laughs> the unexpected, the weird, the different, all of that. So your rising sign, remember, that is kind of like your first impression to the world. How do people view you when they first get to meet you, when they first get to know you, before they get to know your emotions, your soul? What energy are you giving off in those first 30 seconds? And remember, also your rising sign can also be how you view the world. So of course, I'm in this uh, Scorpio rising and tropical astrology. And so I kind of view the world through the lens of scorpionic type of energy. Like I can't trust anybody. Everybody got a secret. Everybody's obsessed about something or someone, you know, so that's kind of how I view people. Everybody's sketchy to me, Scorpio non-trusting energy. But uh, if you're an Aquarius rising, then again, that first impression, and this is something that I see with one particular person, well, actually, Three people I know who are aqua risings that um, they could come across initially as like a little bit weird. You know, people think they're weird, kind of how they express themselves. But, you know, I'm an Aquarius sun. That's just kind of been my life. Um, but remember, it's an air sign. So air signs are all about the communication. One I know in particular does like to talk a lot, a lot, a lot. But again, as an air sign, I get it. So again, that sign of communication, the sign of intellect, the sign of future y'all we be knowing things so if you have Aquarius placements Aquarius energy you can be a visionary you can be somebody who can see things before it becomes a thing and then people are like you're crazy for even thinking that or knowing about that or talking about that and then later down the line it's like I told you so that Saturn rule too, we go through a lot of obstacles when you have Aquarius placements and as Aquarius rising your life can feel like Oh my gosh, what else? There's another obstacle that Saturn energy is trying to teach you lessons, that Uranus energy is unexpected things, sudden things can happen. Now, of course, that's kind of life in general, but for some people, and this is something very interesting that I've learned, and I'm going to see if one of my friends is an Aquarius rising, because there would literally be times where I'd be like, oh my gosh, you're always going through something chaotic, like something, not even like little things that everybody goes through, but like dramatic thing so again Saturn and Uranus combination can maybe make you feel like that and kind of like how your life is played out but as far as you again that different energy that eccentric unique that can kind of be how you can present yourself to people or how they view you when they first get to meet you now for you though your uh, Pisces rules over your second house of home of family of things that you value your wealth and so you could come from a family that's very esoteric, maybe even religious. Your father could be somebody who is very creative, again, religious, spiritual, artistic. The Aquarius rising that I'm thinking of in particular, her father, oh my gosh, brilliant, brilliant mind, so smart and so spiritual. So again, that Piscean type of energy, who he happens to be a Pisces son, which is crazy but again that piscean energy over your family things that you value again you can come from that type of family that type of background um and also to your third house is aries ruled so the third house is the house of siblings the house of um short distance traveling your relatives your neighborhood and so having aries energy placed over that third house as far as let's say your siblings are concerned because this um particular person I know does have siblings. You can have a very active relationship with your siblings. Now active, again, Aries is high energy. It's competitive. It could be fun competition too. Or Mars energy could be, I can't stand these people. I want to fight them. Um, I did see that possibly Khloe Kardashian is an Aquarius rising. And so sometimes with Aqua risings, and I did do a reading with an Aqua rising who does have siblings, where you could feel like your parents favored the other siblings over you that is something that i've seen with uh, a couple of different um 
people who have Aquarius rising. And again, it's because it's Aries is competition, competing for love, maybe competing for love or competing somehow with your siblings. Now, because uh, if Taurus rules over your fourth house, that Venus type of energy, um, internally, you could possibly feel like your mother, because Taurus can be stubborn. It can be like the bull, you know, fighting. Um, let's say gave, giving uh, more love, let's say, to your siblings, or just you yourself didn't get nourished as a child, or you feel like maybe you were deprived of love um, during that time uh, growing up. Now, it doesn't mean you have siblings, but I have seen that too. Like I said, with Aquarius Risings, um, one in particular who I don't, I wouldn't say that their mother doesn't love them, but again, feeling fully nourished, like, um, you know, the soft cuddly type. It's more of like, I'm feeding you and I'm clothing you. And, uh, you know, that's about it. <laughs> um, uh, but that can be seen again, like I said, through that Taurus, um, fourth house energy. And for you, I guess, growing up because this person is not fully um, an adult yet so they don't have they're, they're not on their own but if you are on your own you could now want to have a home where you do the opposite of how you grew up maybe again putting that opposite um Taurus energy that Venusian energy over your home the loving aspect the beauty aspect of again that family life now your fifth house, the fifth house is the house of, oh my gosh, what's my issue? The fifth house is the house of um, Leo, which is for you is Gemini ruled. So fifth house is the house of creativity, the house of children, the house of casual dating, casual romances, um, theater, acting is seen through the fifth house. So having, um, it's also your education too, like college. Um, you could be somebody who was really good, um, one, in school because that gemini energy curious energy mercury energy wanting to learn wanting to communicate you could be very communicative with your children communicative with your children having artistic children very smart clever children because gemini energy an air sign an intellectual sign your kids could be really smart um if you don't have kids you know maybe one day you will and they will be pretty intelligent or clever doesn't mean that they, um, you know, could be geniuses, but very clever, maybe outsmarting people that can also be seen through there. Now, sixth house for you, the sixth house is the house of the, um, I say open enemies, people who you could visibly see trying to get you, um, litigations, your workplace, um, any kind of opposition, obstacles, the house of obstacles. So having cancer ruling over that that's that moon energy wherever the moon energy is it can fluctuate that area of life so for you it can be um let's say extremes in you know one day you have enemies one day you don't one day they're cool with you one day they're not that can also be seen through there too um and it's also the house of i would say money um but it can be a money type of house but your debt so it can go through like extreme debt um you know and the Aquarius rising that I'm thinking of right now, going through a lot of financial situations and then um, one day being like, I just got a high paying job. Like this was a couple of months ago, um, going through this like turmoil of like, where is it going to come from? And then all of a sudden, again, a boost of money just comes out of nowhere. So again, that fluctuating moon energy seen through the sixth house. Your seventh house, of course, is the opposite of your rising sign, your sister sign being in Leo. So the seventh house is the house of business partnerships, marriage, legal bindings between people, the public. And so for you having that Leo ruled seventh house, you could attract a partner, one who can like show you off or wants to show you off or you like to be shown off. You want somebody to be proud of you because Leo energy is very prideful. I have seen people who have Venus in Leo can be very... um like, look at my partner. I know a particular cousin of mine who has Venus and Leo. She's always posting pictures of her husband. And so again, that Leo energy over your seventh house can make somebody, you know, really want to, again, show you off like their trophy. Um, they can boost your ego or you are looking somebody to help boost your ego, boost your image. Um, that can also be seen through there, through that Leo type of energy. You could be attracted to people who are Leo-like, which could be creative. Um, it can also be political. Um, or again, very independent leader-like. Um, and a lot of times too, the career can take off for um, these people because again, Leo is the king. Leo is royalty. Leo is status, okay? Your eighth house is ruled by Virgo. So the eighth house is the house of sudden events. It's the house of Scorpio. So things that are hidden, 
um you know uh oh there's so much in there um inheritance in-laws are also seen through shared finances taxes that's all seen through the eighth house and so virgo ruling over your eighth house Family assets, joint assets with your partner can be very calculative. You could always be investing into something. Again, earth energy, earth energy, not gold diggers, y'all. Earth signs, earth energy is about material. It's about security. It's about stability. So again, having that Virgo energy over your house of shared finances, you could be very, again, calculative about where the money is going, okay? Where the money is going. And again, always investing, always having some kind of also... Maybe uh, very intellectual conversations with your in-laws because Mercury energy, Virgo is Mercury energy. So, and then the eighth house is the house of in-laws. So you could be somebody who's, again, very calculative in the way that you speak to them. You know, you're not all about the small talk and the fluff, but again, intellectual intellectually stimulating conversations too that can be seen from there um your ninth house is ruled by libra now again the ninth house is the house of sagittarius which has to do with um your philosophy long distance traveling foreign land foreign culture um higher education uh your morals law is seen through there and so having Libra energy over it, Libra is all about fairness, balance, equality, you know, not rocking the boat too much. How do we keep this even? And so your views, your morals, um, your, uh, you know, your beliefs. And again, depending on, I didn't say this at the beginning because you always got to throw this in there. Depending on if you have certain planets in certain signs in certain areas, it can affect, you know, but overall Libra ninth house ruled can be very like not too extreme in what they believe in, not too extreme on like their takes when it comes to things that are ninth house uh, themes that can be seen through there too. Um, unless you have like Venus and Virgo or something, because Libra is Venus energy. And then if it's in debilitated where it calls debilitated in Virgo, you can have like extreme views because that Virgo energy is very critical, very intense sometimes. Um, Ooh, your 10th house is ruled by Scorpio. So let's make a note really quick. Scorpio energy, because it embodies jealousy, it, em it embodies obsession, it embodies... So whenever people have Scorpio energy, I'm a Scorpio rising. Whenever people have Scorpio energy, it can lead to those kind of things. So whatever area, because everybody has Scorpio ruling over a certain house, whatever area it is ruling over, you can have those tendencies. Now with the 10th house, the house of career or public image or your reputation, you could be somebody who gets jealous of people's careers. You could be jealous of people's success. You could be jealous of how people are presented um, out in the world. So that is seen through there too. And because that is Mars ruled, it's a, it's a little bit intensity there. Mars also rules over your third house, which again is also seen through like social media, your communication. So you could have that competitive nature in the area of career, competitive nature in the area of your public image or how you present yourself. That can all be seen through there. So that's kind of just to say everybody got something somewhere this is why i teach people astrology because if you look and you open your phone and you see that somebody's doing something stupid and they're making thousands of dollars just dancing or just whatever again that scorpionic energy can come out of you and be like what i do all this xyz and and look what this person does and you know whatever everybody has something somewhere everybody has something to work on everybody has something within their own charts that they probably don't want to deal with so understand that don't ever be jealous of people because you never know what else they are dealing with or are given that you would not want trust me i have learned to be very content with my own life and how it is going um because i've seen enough charts to know everybody has something somewhere and is dealing with something okay um also for you your 11th house is ruled by sagittarius so the 11th house is the house of friends your social network your goals your aspirations all that is seen through the 11th house and so having Sagittarius there, which is Jupiter ruled, Jupiter is all about optimism and expansion. You could be somebody who's drawn to Sagittarian like people, let's say drawn to people who are more philosophical in nature. Your friends maybe are more philosophical in nature. Maybe they're religious. Maybe they are just, again, optimistic. Maybe they are people who are adventurous. You can be drawn to those kind of things. Same thing with your networks, your social groups. You could have, again, um, spiritually inclined if you're watching this you probably have spiritually inclined friends again jupiterian sagittarian type of friends 
Um, your 12th house is ruled by Capricorn. So the 12th house, again, is the house of isolation, you know, long distance journeys. A lot of times um, I have seen people who have 12th house placements can live far away from their family. They can be people who go on these long extended, you know, let's say work um, trips. But because you have Saturn there, and it's also the house of like your energy, your physical energy, your exhaust. Are you constantly exhausted all the time? That can be seen through the 12th house. Um, and then having Capricorn energy over there, it could exhaust you again of your energy. So when you do travel far, you don't want to be gone for a long period of time. You want to, again, be hurry up and get back home. The comfort is for you is your home because you have Venus ruling over that fourth house. You know, it's Taurus energy i don't want to say lazy energy but when it comes to your home you could like to maybe relax there and so having that capricorn energy over the 12th house could make you be like i just need to hurry, hurry up and get back and get home this is too exhausting being gone for seven eight nine ten days on a vacation um that can be seen through there too but overall y'all this is just a general energy of this um rising sign again it depends on the degrees it depends on planets it depends on aspects that you have if you have certain planets sitting in cer some of these houses it can change the dynamic of course um so if you like a more in-depth analysis because i don't do cutesy astrology i'm gonna tell you the real like i'm gonna tell you hey the love life might not be loving life right now you know it and you just have to accept it you know there are things within our chart and there's only a certain certain boundaries i'd say we can do you know so i like to give people the real so that they're not going about life like they did something wrong or you know making mistakes or thinking that because they did this and this happened no everything you know i just help people make sense of it i'll just say it like that so if you like a more in-depth analysis of your birth chart and whatever aspect of life i'm gonna tell you i tell you I tell you a lot of stuff um go ahead and hit me up on any social media platform go ahead and go to my website let's talk let's chat let me get in your business okay so i can help you navigate this human experience okay y'all so i thank y'all for watching and again aquarius risings i love you aqua sun let's be friends comment below if anything resonated like this video so i can like push it out to the world y'all i'm like slowly trying to get to a thousand people this has been a very much Saturnian type of year, y'all. Can't even explain it, but I'm going to do a video about that in a second, y'all. Thank y'all so much, and I will talk to you on the next video, which will be Pisces Rising.